Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where today I'm going to take a look at a puzzle that uh, Proto Misapathy has sent us on our Twitter account, which is at Cryptic Cracking, for those of you who don't follow us uh, and may wish to. Um, now, this intrigued me, uh, partially because of the colouring, as you can see, but also um, the message that came with it, which suggested that there are two hidden triples in an X-Wing in order to solve this expert-rated puzzle. And sometimes I do like to solve the puzzle knowing which advanced techniques I'm going to need uh, to use. Um, it's good practice. Uh, if you're trying to use all of the techniques you know, sometimes you can feel a bit lost and you won't see the wood for the trees. And occasionally it's like a study in music. You know, you get better by by knowing where you're headed and sort of trying to hone your brain to really uh, detect uh, a particular advanced technique rather than uh, running through everything it knows. So I'm hoping that's going to be a big hint. Um, now the other reason I thought we'd look at this is I had a look at Proto Misapathy's Twitter and it emerges that, I don't know, there's some sort of Leonardo da Vinci, some incredible sort of graphics and pencil drawings on the um, on the Twitter account, so I thought, you know, if Leonardo da Vinci asks you to solve the Sudoku, uh, you've got to man up and try and do it. So, now if you'd like to have a go at the puzzle, uh, here it is. You can uh, you can find the link under in the video description. That'll take you to our software where you can have a go at the puzzle first. Um, and if you have any trouble with it, then maybe watch me struggle through it now. Um, also, if you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing, and um, we really appreciate it. Any of you in a position to sponsor us on Patreon, that's massively appreciated too. Um, and you can find a link uh, under under the video for that as well. Now let's go. Now I'm going to. So, firstly, I'm going to start looking for these hidden triples. Often you can see these straight off the bat in a Sudoku. Those of you familiar with the New York Times hard Sudoku will be well aware of this. So the first place my eyes are drawn is this um, this box, and the reason is that I've got these three empty cells in column five and these three empty cells in row eight. So where I can't place any of these four digits one, five, seven, or eight. So if I can find any sort of restriction, especially I think looking at column five, we've already got three digits there. So the one and the eight. Yes, okay, so it's not a hidden triple, actually it's a hidden double. We have a 1 and an 8 as well in row 2 here. So where can a 1 and an 8 go in column 5? There's only two positions. Oops. Uh, 1, 8 there, 1, 8 there. And it's this sort of thing that sometimes with some Sudoku you can get straight off the bat and they give you unusual things that really help when you go to the sort of more standard stuff. Uh, now let me just take a stare at this for a bit longer, see if we can see anything better. Okay, yeah, one, four, and six in this box. So have a think about whether or not you can spot anything that we can do with those numbers. And the, the key again is to look at the open file. The open file here is row five where we now have these three cells not being able to be 1, 4, and 6. Now we've already got a 9 and a 7 in the rows. So there are actually only four positions now that are open for the numbers 1, 4, and 6 in row 5. And if we carefully look at this square, this square sees a 1, a 6, and a 4. So this square can't be a 1, 4, and 6 either. So in row 5, there's actually only three squares that the one, four, and six can go into, and that's these three squares. And obviously there's a one there as well, so this square is even more restricted. So one, four, six. So let's just check the rest of this row now. We need two, three, five, and eight. Mm, no, okay. So what else can we do? Well, there's loads of things, but I've just noticed one more thing. Let's have a look at this box. Try and use the same technique again. See if you can spot what we need to do. And the key here, again, is to notice the open file. We've got these three squares in column three that are not the numbers one, six, and nine. And because we've got two, four, seven in the column already, there's only three squares open. 
So there's a 169 triple in column 5 like that. So now Okay, so now up here we need, what's it, 3, 5 and 8? 5 and an 8 already appearing, so we can make some pencil marks here. Where I pencil mark in the corner of squares like this, that means that a number can only go in two positions in the 3x3 three three block that it's in. Where I pencil mark in the centre of cells, like these cells, that means that the square is restricted to just the numbers I place in the centre of the cell. And this, this is sort of a, a hybrid notation. It's very similar to what I use on paper and paper solving. It's definitely, uh, definitely something I'd recommend. Now, right, threes. We've got these two threes. Now, because we've restricted these two cells, this square is a three. In fact, hang on a sec. It's not, it's not a triple, but there is a double now. If we look at this block, where can we put the 1 and the 6 now? We have a 1 and a 6 here and a 1 and a 6 here. So only the 1 and the 6 can only go in these two cells. Um, so in fact, we can, we can do a bit better than we had done. 1, 6, like that. Now, can we do anything more with that? Look, seven, seven, there's a seven in one of those two squares. And I guess because this is a three, five, eight triple, this two also allows us to, you know, uh, actually I'm not enough my notation out. I want sevens like this and twos like that. And these, these two sevens now, the fact there's a seven in one of these two squares and this seven and this seven means this square at the bottom is a seven. Six here. This five means it, there must be a five in one of those two squares. We know there's a five in one of these three squares. So there's a five in one of these positions. Now we know one of these two squares is a nine because this is not a nine. This is a one six nine triple, but as this is not a nine, the nine must be in one of these two squares. That marries up with this nine. And this nine to force a nine into one of those two squares. And in fact, we've got quite a lot done now in this column look. So we need to place two, four, five, eight, nine. So this square, what can this square be? It can't be two. It can be 4, but it can't be 5, it can't be 8, and it can't be 9. This square, I think, has to be a 4. 4, 4, ah, oh, that's useful now. Because that means, in this block, the 4 is in either of these two squares. Remember, these three squares form a 3, 5, 8 triple. So the, this 4 allows us to pencil mark those two 4s. This square can no longer be a 2, because of the logic we're using when we make the pencil marks in the corners, we're saying that the 4 and the 7 are confined to one of these two positions, so it's not possible for a third number to sort of interfere with that possibility. That becomes a 2, therefore this is a 2, only place a 2 can go in the block, and the only place a 2 can go in the central square now is here. You know, <laughs> we know virtually nothing about the right hand side of this grid um, but hey hopefully that won't hold us up too much um, now what can we do I'm just going to take a look at column 5 because we've got that 1 8 pair so we need 2 3 4 and 6 so 3 here so there's a 3 in one of those two squares This isn't a 2, so the only place a 2 can go in the column is in one of these two squares. So we 2, 3. 
So this square can only be a 4 or a 6, just looking at the column uh, column 5. Now, can we do anything with that? Not sure. Ah, uh, but look, go 7, 7, this square must be a 7. You've all, you've probably all been shouting about that, sorry. Um, I'm doing this in a slightly unconventional way today, as uh, so I'm sure you'll agree. So 1, 4, 6 and 8 into this square. So 1, 4, this can only be a 6 or an 8 um, because of the 4 and the 1 here. So ah, so now that now we've got three squares with central notation with the numbers 1, 6 and 8 in them. So this is a 1, 6, 8 triple along row 4. So the only open numbers then are 5, 7 and 9. So this is a 5 or a 9. 5, 7 or 9. Ah, 7. There's a 5 and a 9 in column 9 already. This can only be a 7. 7, 7. We get to pencil mark some 7s now in this square. 7. Okay. Um, right, so, and we've got an 8 9 pair look in row 6 here. So let's. Now, can we. Do, now, one thing, quickly, just to. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious, but, but this is very unlikely to be part of the X Wing. And, and the reason is that, that we've got such. Uh, we've already got so much information in column 2 here. So even, let me show you, even if this was a third corner of, a, of an X-wing, if we look at this square, um, even if it was a finned X-wing situation, so we were looking at, say, an 8 being only possible in this square and this square in row 1, I'm never going to be able to eliminate down the column. These two squares are already filled, so I really doubt, I'm not certain, but I doubt that this 8-9 pair is going to be where we're going to find the X-Wing. Um, so, uh, let's just keep on looking, I think, for given digits. So I don't think that we've exhausted everything we can do in that regard. I'm just going to check row 9 of the grid. We need 3, 4, 6, and 8. So this square can only be 3 or 4. Was here, look. So th this can only be six or eight. So the eights are restricted to two positions in um, in row nine, and I th the fours are restricted to only two positions in row nine. Let me just take a quick think about this. So this is the other position for the 8. Um, no, I can't see how that's going to give us anything. Let's check 4s. The 4s are in one of these two positions. Um, so 4 here, 4 here. So what we're looking for, just to remind you, is a situation where um, another row has 4s locked into uh, preferably two positions and where at least one of those positions is going to have to marry up with what we've got here. Um, so this situation where you have two numbers locked into two positions in a row or a column is the starting point for you know three or four different exotic techniques. The, the X-wing, the skyscraper, the finned X-wing, the empty rectangle. Um, so always this is what we're looking for and then we're looking for at least one um, column that has has is going to have a four in, in a similar position so let's just check it's not looking great um, Ah, now that's yeah okay. Now maybe maybe row one because the four in this block is locked 
into this square in terms of row one because of the four here. So it's not. It is, ah, it's just good enough because this is a four or a six in this marked in the centre. So let me. Sorry, I'm just I'm babbling. I know that, but I babble sometimes. Um, let's let's talk about this. So if we look along row one, the fours are locked into one of three positions, not two positions, but three positions. But the important thing is that in column seven, the fours marry up exactly. Now in a classic X-wing structure, this square here would be the only other place for a four, along with this one, in, in row one. And if, if this could be a four and these were not four, we would have the classic X-wing shape where we'd know that the X, the fours were either arranged down this side of an X or down this side of an X. And that would allow us to eliminate fours in the rest of the column. So we could eliminate this four here. Now, the interesting thing about the finned X-wing is that we can still make use of this of similar type of logic. So let's look at, I suppose the simplest way of explaining it is to look at row 9 of the grid and ask ourselves about the possibilities. So obviously if this square is a 4, we can eliminate the 4 from this square. What if this square is not a 4? Well we know if this is not a 4, this must be a 4 because there are only two positions for the 4 in row 9. But if this is a 4, this is not a 4 and therefore the 4 in row 1 will either be here or here and therefore I eliminate this 4 again so in either of the binary situations that can exist in terms of this Sudoku 4 here or the 4 here in either of those situations I get to eliminate this 4 and that I'm hoping will be important because now we get 6 here, so 6, 6, this is a 6, 6 into one of those two squares there. Now can we use this 6 for anything else? Yes, look, oh yes we can actually, this 6 becomes huge because look at the effect the 6 has on this square. It means there's a 6 in one of those two positions which means this pencil mark 6 we just made is no longer true. This is the 6. And now neither of these 169 possibilities can validly take a 6 anymore. So this becomes a 1, 9. Um, well there's a few things that happen. This becomes a 1 and a 9 pair and therefore this must be a 6. That's the first thing. Obviously this is the only place now a 6 can go in this block so that becomes a 6 this must become a 1 and now whoa, we're starting to really uh, cook with gas because there is all sorts of stuff that we can now do so this 6 interacts with its friends in the 168 triple now so this is now an 8 which means this is an 8 which means this is an 8 and we know one of these is a three. This must be a one. Uh, oops, that must be a one because it can no longer be a six or an eight. One, one. There must be a one in either this square or this square. Eight, eight. Now you can see if we look down column five now, we still need to place two, three, and four, and we've got. Uh, let's, I've got to be careful here. This 4 here is not in the corner of the square. So actually, if I put the corner markings in, it goes like that. So this is 2, 3, and 4. This must be 6 and 9 into these two squares. And you can see again, that's going to be useful. Because now this must be a 9. And this is a 1. And some mark 1's over on the right-hand side. 9, 9, 3, 5. Okay, so all of a sudden, as I say, we're starting to make progress. We need 1, 3, and ah, oh, this square here can only be a 4 now because there's already a 1 and a 3 in column 6. So that becomes a 4. 
those of you concentrating on the X-Wing will be able to notice something about that. Um, let's remove that four from there. We've got one three pair into these two squares. One three, one three. And over here we must be looking for, ah, well that's going to be an eight. Five, five, five. Ah, oh, we find a five, seven pair now. Six, nine. So this must be a two or a four. Let's pencil mark that in in case that becomes helpful. Seven. I don't think I ever. So this is five, eight, and nine in some order. Let's pencil mark the eights in. Five, nine, one, three. And I'm just going to check down column 9 as well. So we need 2, 3, 4, and 8. So 2, 4 here. So this, sorry, 2 and 8 there. So this must be 3 or 4. In fact, the 8s now look, there's only one position an 8 can go, and it's here. So we've got an 8, an 8, and this 8. So this square here must be an 8. And that is going to help us over on this side. That resolves the 8, the 9, and the 5. This therefore becomes a 5. This must be a 9. I'm, I'm hesitant to say it, but it's starting to look like we might be uh, on the home straight. 9, 6, like that. This must be 6 and 4. 1 and 3 into these two squares. So let's put the 1 and the 3 in. And therefore, I haven't made a mistake, this should be a 5. Is that right? Yeah. 5, 5, 3, 3, 1, 1. And yeah, I've, you know, I, I fully accept this was an unusual way to solve this puzzle. Um, but it was very much driven off the fact that we had this, you know, this help in terms of how we needed to go about solving the puzzle today. And I definitely think it was it was quite an interesting way to do it. I quite enjoyed approaching it in a in a slightly different way to the way I would normally. Now this must be a four, it's the only place a four can go. Four, seven, seven, two, therefore seven and five here. Now this must be two. Now this must be two, three, four, hopefully. And we're almost four and eight and if I haven't made a mistake we're looking at two and three to complete now let's check the puzzle and it's all good so that is how to solve this Sudoku very interesting um, yeah so it's literally just started off finding pairs and triples by staring at the grid without entering a single number and that's quite a good tip for you and then we had to do something a bit more exotic towards the end but um, you know say la vie hope you enjoyed it do let us know in the comments if you did or if you didn't and um, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.